we shall now quickly go over to stress. And like I said, the stress part is the supra segmental part of spoken English. And then under the stress, a whole lot of things need to be brought to bear under stress pattern. First, you need to know what we mean by the expression sea level. Stress simply means the emphasis placed on a particular sea level. And so, when we say a word, a sea level is stressed, it means that that sea level has emphasis placed on it in the pronunciation of the word. And so, for words that are monosyllabic, a word is said to be monosyllabic if that word has a single breath pause. A word like go, G O. Try to put your palm close to your mouth as you pronounce the word G O. You would agree with me that the air that is going to rush out of your mouth, what we refer to as a pulmonic aggressive air, is going to just be once. And so we do like this go. The air is going to rush out once. It therefore means that the word go is monosyllabic. To stress a monosyllabic word, you simply need to write the word all in uppercase. But for a bisyllabic word like above, A B O V E, transcribed this way, is a bisyllabic word. It's a bisyllabic word. E and above. Above. Okay. Now let's do this. For mono, sorry, for bisyllabic word, if they announce that stress will fall on the first syllable, then if they are verbs, that stress will fall on the second syllable. Look at this word. These words. Well, Refuse. This is a noun. We have refuse. This is a verb. Do you now agree with me, or would you now agree with me, that where the stress of a word falls contributes in no small measure to the word class that word belongs to, whether a noun or a verb. You see, the reason it, it's very important you know how to go about placing your emphasis in the pronunciation of a word. What I think means is that if you place emphasis on the wrong syllable, you could mislead your listeners because you could be asking someone to come and the person is gone. Because you have not placed the pronoun, sorry, the syllable, uh, the emphasis on the right syllable. And so when you want to say, for instance, go and dispose of the refuse, you don't say, go and dispose of the refuse. Just as you don't say, I refuse to answer his call, instead of, I refuse to answer his call. I'm sure you understood the meaning of all of those permutations and combinations I have made to be able to explain the points uh, I have raised about bisyllabic word. The same thing applies to the word conduct and conduct. We have C O N D U C T, then C O N, then capital letter D U C T. We have conduct. Conduct and conduct. So this is a verb and this is a noun. Okay, to so our conduct. I hate bad conduct. For the verb, conduct yourself well. Conduct yourself. And of course, to know a syllable that is stressed, when you open the dictionary, you see something that looks like a diacritic, like this, close to the syllable that is stressed or behind the stressed syllable. That's how you find out a syllable that is stressed. In case you're looking up the word 
in the dictionary. And so it is advised that if you want to look up the meaning of a word to find out its semantic, the meaning of the word, you should not just stop at looking at the meaning of the word and of course the synonymy, which means other, other, not other pronunciation, other meanings of the word or other words that can replace the word. You just don't stop there. You can look at how the word has been transcribed so that you'll be able through looking at the transcription to pronounce the word. So you don't just stop at the semantic or the meaning of the word. It is quite advisable that you get to find out how the word is pronounced. That way you get the best. And so the question you should ask, what if the word is not a bisyllabic word? If the word is a polysyllabic word, a polysyllabic word is a word that consists of more than two syllables, comprises more than two syllables. And so you could have words like the one who have it indefensible, democratic, words like that, democratic, about four syllables. Words like that are referred to as poly syllabic words. And of course, for your exam, you're not going to have any business to do with bisyllabic word. All the words you're going to encounter in the examination of would be polysyllabic word. And so the question will be, how do I stress a syllable in a polysyllabic word? The answer to that question is very simple. One, you do not stress a suffix or a prefix. What is a suffix? A suffix, a rather first list now with a prefix. A prefix is whatever item or element you add in front of the root word. Let's take an example. Look at this word, uneducated. Un. Of course, the root word is educate. That's the root word. So any other thing added here is a prefix. Whatever you add behind is what we refer to as what the suffix. I'm sure you understand that. So, to stress a polysyllabic word, you do not have in the business with the prefix and, of course, the suffix. Did you get that? You are only going to contend with the root word of the word. And so, what do you know about the root word? If a word has a long vowel sound, like E, O, U, uh, uh, such syllable is likely going to attract a primary stress. Again, if you have a syllable where you have a diphthong like A, L, O, O, I, E, R, or such syllables or such syllable that contains any of this element is equally likely a syllable that is a candidate for a primary stress. If you equally have the same where you have the plosive sound like this, these sounds that are six, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six is complete now. Any syllable that has any of this sound, that's the plosive sound, is equally likely to be stressed. To have Do you get that? This one is said to be bilabial plosive, bilabial plosive. This is alveolar plosive. This is vela plosive. They both are produced from the same parts. Same for this. Then both are Vela sounds. Now let's take an example. Look at the word. Look at the word. Okay, the word is indefensible, and you would agree with me that this word has indefensible. How many syllables? Four. One, two, three, four. Am I correct? Indefensible. So five syllables. Indefensible. Okay. And now you would agree with me that um, this is a prefix, and of course, perhaps this 
is the suffix. And therefore, in stressing this word, we do not have any business with this and this so it's being eliminated. Hence, option A and option B cannot be the answer. It's very simple. So you now, sorry, yes, option A and E. So you streamline the options to three. So you have A, B, C, and um, D. And so this is indefensible. The word is pronounced what? Indefensible. What did I say? Indefensible. Not indefensible. Not indefensible. But indefensible. Indefensible. Therefore, the answer is C. Now that's for it for emphatic stress. So we shall quickly take care of. Um, sorry, that's for it for word stress. We shall now quickly take care of emphatic stress. In emphatic stress, one word is written in the uppercase in a sentence. And so to choose the right answer, you simply go to the option where. You do not find that word that is written in your packet. So, look at the example. The dream team won the trophy last summer. The word last in the dream team won the trophy last summer is written in uppercase. So, in option A, we have, did the dream team win the trophy this summer? Did the dream team win the Trophy last summer, so B cannot be answered because the word last is there. C. Did the dream team win the last summer? Last is there. That can be the answer. D. Did the golden eaglet win the cup last summer? That can be the answer. E. Did the golden eagle win the trophy last year? Last is equal to that. You would agree with me that the only option where you don't have the word last repeated is option A, where we read. Did the dream team win the trophy this summer? And so, option A is a